Hi, I'm Riyadh and I'm the presenter of a new BBC Three six-part documentary series called Queer Britain. Um, the show launches on May 7th, so to coincide with that, my mates at the outmost have asked me to answer some questions for you about the show. So um, let's get straight into it. We've got six questions to get through. I'll try not to ramble on too long. Uh, so number one, what do you find different about the LGBT community in London and Dublin? Um, so I live in London, that's where I am right now. Um, I lived in Dublin all my life until last year and the differences are quite stark actually. Uh, number one is scale. It's just massive over here and because it, it's so big, there's a little bit less of a family atmosphere in the community. Um, you're less likely to bump, it, bump into people you know, which means that, it, that the community is a little bit more spread out and split, you know, so East London gays are or West or Southwest London gays are so, so, so different and will very rarely uh, intermingle, um, which can be sad at times, but you know, hey-ho, each to their own. Um, the good thing about London is that there's a lot less uh, stigma and uh, I guess Irish shame around sex, if you will. Uh, I, I think sex here is a lot more liberal, it's a lot more open, it's a lot more celebrated, which was uh, very, very new to me coming from Dublin and having lived at home pretty much my entire life. Uh, number two, uh, pick three of the most moving and inspiring people you met while filming the series. Um, okay, so number one would be a guy called Josh from our Faith and Sexuality film. Um, he is an amazing, amazing man in his mid-twenties, who is a former Jehovah's Witness, who was cast out from the church and cast out from his family simply because he's gay. Um, his story is so touching, so moving, very upsetting, but there's a sort of a happy and positive end to it. So he, he really touched me. He's in the first episode that goes out on May 7th, so you'll see him. And um, the next person would be uh, Damien. Damien is... Uh, a homeless man, a homeless gay man living in Birmingham. He's been on the streets for about eight years now, over eight years actually. Um, and he is in that situation because of his sexuality. So meeting him um, was not only super eye-opening, but also very upsetting because uh, for a while before I came out, I honestly believed that there was a chance I could end up like him and um, that my parents would uh, not accept me for who I am and just sort of say, there you go, you look after yourself now. He inspired me because uh, his outlook on life is so positive. Even in his situation, he still finds that silver lining. He still manages to find things funny. He makes other people laugh and he he just doesn't get down on life. Um, it's It puts a lot of things into perspective when you have so much and you're so lucky. Uh, and then the third person would be uh, Book Angel. So Book Angel is a trans man. Um, he's a porn star from the States and uh, we did an interview about his career and how he is the most famous man with a vagina is how he's known. And, and the reason why I was moved and inspired by Book is because he has used his art, porn, to um, not just titillate and, and uh, I guess get people off, but also to educate um, and spread awareness about trans issues, about loving your body, uh, loving sex and breaking down um, the stigma that comes with sex, but in particular, queer sex. Um, so, oh, getting a text from my mother halfway <laughs> through the interview. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, book angel was a really, really great person to speak to. Question three, what one big thing did you learn about masculinity and the male body in filming the documentary? Um, I learned that the prevalence of body dysmorphia, anorexia, bulimia and other issues is so much bigger than I ever could have expected. And the sad thing that goes with that is that these issues seem to be fed and even born from the community itself and this unattainable desire and goal for the perfect body, whatever that is. Um, I, I also learned that the ha hashtag mask for mask thing is a lot more prevalent as well. Um, there seems to be this sort of dialogue of um, femininity being lesser than, um, being camp is a, a negative thing, being yourself is almost a negative thing and you're encouraged to be this uber masculine, uber Adonis figure. It's just, it's just not healthy and it's led a lot of people to some very, very awful places. Um, and what we were sort of looking at is what's being done actively right now to change that within the community and 
really there isn't much um, which is one of the reasons why we felt that this documentary in particular was super important to make just to get that conversation going and to educate people like me who, I, who really didn't know that um, there are a lot of people out there suffering in silence suffering alone and um, they are finding ways to sort of m mask these issues that they're going through so your best friend might be suffering with anorexia and you may not even know um so yeah learned a lot on that one um number four does the irish definition of masculinity match up with the uk's um good question i think the definition of masculinity both in the straight and lgbtq plus community are uh, quite similar um i think in general in society if you're a man biologically it's better if you act like a man if you're a woman it's better if you act like the woman you're less likely to ruffle up feathers and you're you're more likable or something like that that that's the sort of feeling that you get going through life i think in the uk um there is more of a pressure uh, i think when i moved here anyway i felt a lot more um a, of a desire internally out of nowhere to begin going to the gym a lot more looking after my skin more um, buying clothes that sort of suit my body shape more it just became a lot less relaxed than it was back in Dublin um, and the reasoning behind that I guess is probably due to the sheer number of people and the um, the competition that's out there to find the man of your dreams to go on a, a hot date or to just feel confident when you're out and about uh, number five what advice do you have for people who could be in a difficult situation at home if they come out um what i'd say is if, if you are planning to come out and you're not sure about it you're not sure about how your parents might react um, make sure you come out to other people that you trust first come out to yourself first of all make sure you're completely 100 percent happy with that and saying those words and uh owning that identity don't rush it that's the worst thing you can do um speak to someone you trust and um, that could be a friend that could be a counselor that could be a teacher that could be an auntie or an uncle um and make sure that you have a support structure there both emotionally and and logistically physically you know in the event that something nasty happens and you need to get out of your family home fingers crossed that doesn't happen to you that you have a backup plan and if, if you are in a situation where something goes wrong what i'd say is um reach out and ask for help professional help uh, whether that's from belong to in Ireland or the uh, gay switchboard the LGBT switchboard here uh, in the UK don't be afraid to ask for help because that's what they're there for um, and know that there are millions of people silently cheering you on and supporting you even if you don't know those people they are there for you um, they, and, and you just need to find them find your community go out and meet these people and I think you'll feel a lot less alone and you'll feel more confident number five six I don't know <laughs> what's the craziest thing you found out about porn and fetishes while filming this series um there are a lot of people out there that are using porn as a form of activism and a, uh, a form of sex education and to uh find themselves as performers or producers or directors you know it goes so much further than the conventional use of porn um and, and you know i, I met a, a, a trans woman a cookie pup who uses porn and her cam shows to uh spread the word about what it is to be a trans person and to help young trans people to find their identity and to uh it just give them basic day-to-day -day advice of what it's like to be on hormones and um, what it's like to go through the transition and, and what happens to your emotions, your libido and as, how society will view you and how things might change in your world and you never ever really put the two together. Porn is just sort of this thing over there that you know we all sort of like hush hush silently go to when we, we want a, a little bit of you know uh, excitement <laughs> but it, it, it goes broader and, and bigger than that and also um that porn comes in so many forms uh, queer porn in particular you know it's there's this really art house um short films short porn films that are made that are stunning looking and then of course there's the, the more um amateur low budget stuff but they've all got a, a um a role to fill and i think that that was a, a great thing for me to see and learn uh, that one's a really really interesting one i i think you'll enjoy it and then the last question is 
do you think LGBT people in Ireland would benefit from watching this series? Um, absolutely, no shadow of a doubt. Um, geographically, Ireland and the UK, they're so close together. There are differences, particularly in the LGBT community, but the issues that we're looking at in this series, homelessness, faith and sexuality, body image, body shaming, uh, porn, the word queer, um, all of these issues have um, a hold in, in both locations. And I, I think as a young LGBT person, I don't know, do I get to call myself young anymore as 26? <laughs> I wish that this show was out and available when I was coming out. I wish this show was available even a year or two years ago for me. Um, I got the joy and pleasure of going through the process for months and months and months and learning more about myself and my community. And I, I think that this show will help people uh, not just in Ireland, not just in the UK, but also further afield in the States, in Asia, everywhere. It's going to be online, available worldwide on YouTube. So that's my hope anyway for it. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, it'll make you feel every emotion under the sun, depending on what episode you're watching. So yeah, I hope I answered your questions well. And thank you to the utmost for uh, all the love and sharing the word about Queer Britain, which starts... Uh, on BBC iPlayer and on the BBC3 YouTube channel from May 7th with a new episode going up each week after that. Um, yeah, so feel free to tell your mates about it. Uh, get your parents to sit down and watch it. I think it will be a real eye-opener. And um, be sure to let us know on the BBC3 social medias and uh, my own Twitter and Instagram what you think about the show as well. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in, in Dublin soon. Big love. Bye.